Let's now learn what is the difference between a player and a character. And then we're going to learn how to get the player from a character and how to get a character from a player. So first, I'm going to show you what is the difference between a player and a character. Let's play test and take a look. So as you are inside the game, to find your player, you're going to go inside the player service and you should find all the players inside the player service. This is my player right here, Price Count to Puncher. Now to find the character on the other hand, you're gonna go to the workspace, expand that, and you should find your character and all the other player's character inside the workspace. Here is my character inside the workspace. And those are the differences between a player and a character. Now let's learn how to get a character from a player. So let's play test again and take a look. As I play the game, we're going to go into the player service, click on my player, and you should see a property called character. And here it is, character. So this here is my character, and that is how you get a character from a player. Let's go and take a look at the script that uses this. Inside the service script service, we have a script called leaderboard. And in your script, just enter the following lines. These here are from our prior tutorial. We're creating the leaderboard. And I have added these lines here. So we're waiting for seven seconds. Remember the character is just a property of the player. So it's the character property of the player. And that is how I get the character because I have the player passing in over here. So from the player, I can get the character. And once I have the character, I can change the character's property. Right here, I'm changing the jump power of the humanoid object inside the character, and I'm giving it 200. The default is 50, so 200 should give my character four times the jump power. It's gonna be able to jump four times higher. Let's play test now and take a look. So remember, we're giving it seven seconds. So right now I can jump only this much, but in seven seconds, you can see how much higher I can jump. And that is the benefit of being able to get the character from the player. Next, we're going to look at how to get the player from the character. To see an example of this, we're going to go to our create object script. So basically, these lines were from our prior tutorial. You can refer to the prior tutorial for more details. These lines here, we're just creating a part. And I have added a touch event to the part down here. So these are just routine stuff. We're checking to see if, if it's a humanoid that is touching the part. And here is where we're getting the player from the character. Because remember, when somebody touches the part, we're passing in the other part, which is the part that is touching this part, right? And from that, other part dot parent is going to give you the character. That is, if it is a player's character that is touching this part, then other part dot parent is going to give you the character. From that character, I'm using this API, get player from character, and this is available from the player service. I'm using that API to give me the player that owns that character. Once I have found the player that owns that character, I'm going to look for an object under the player named touches. If I do not see that object named touches under the player, I'm going to create it by using the uh, instance.new to create a new integer value under the player, and I'm going to name it touches. All right, so if the object named touches doesn't exist, we're going to create it. And then we're going to add one to it. Otherwise, if it exists already, right, we're not going to do this. We're just going to go down here and add one to the object named touches. Again, this here is how you get the player from the character. And now let's play test and take a look. So I'm waiting for that block. 
Now, first thing I want to show you is I'm going to go to my player, expand the player. Right now, it does not have an object named touches under the player, right? But as soon as I go and touch this block, and remember, we do not have a debouncing to that touch event. So I just need to touch it. And immediately, you see touches has been created by the script. And if we look inside touches, you can see I got 40 touches. I'm going to try and touch it again. You see how fast it goes up? Now I got 121 touches. Let me see if I can jump on top of it. Whoa, I forgot my jump power is so strong. And there it is. It increases, but not by a lot. Because when I stop, then it stopped counting the touches. And there it is. It's very important to know the difference between a player and a character. And also two very important things to know is how to get a player from a character and how to get a character from a player.